What is up, everybody, and welcome to another Crack a Pack episode. Today, we are opening up a pack of 2011 core sets. Surprisingly, not a, a, a pack that we've actually opened a lot of on this uh, this channel. I, we end up with a lot of like 2014 and like 2012 occasionally, but we really don't open 2011 very much. So I'm pretty excited about opening this. Uh, obviously, the shot here is to get a Titan. Uh, I love all of the Titans. They are powerhouse cards, and they are first picks every single time. Uh, so I'm really excited. Hopefully we can pull something really cool out of this one. Uh, I uh, we, we are going to go through this as if it's a pack one, pick one scenario, of course. So we will go through every card. Just want to keep in mind, though, this is a core set. So please don't be expecting crazy powerhouse cards unless we get some bomb rare. Uh, but this is a core set, so generally the power level is going to be dimmed down just a bit. So... That in mind, we'll go through this. We have Mana Leak first. It's an instant for one and a blue. Counter target spell unless its controller pays three. Uh, this is a very, very efficient counter. What I love about this is you can play it on turn two or any turn after that, assuming you're hitting your land drops. J you can counter anything, which is really, really important uh, because obviously creatures are generally what you're going to run up against. And so being able to play this over something like a negate is actually really, really big. Obviously, the fact is your opponent can pay the three at some point. Uh, and so eventually, the, there, there's a lot of diminishing returns uh, on a card like this. However, it is still a very powerful counter. It's not necessarily first pickable. I'd rather pick some aggressive creature in a limited you know, draft scenario. But it's pretty good in like a control tempo style deck. This is exactly the kind of card that you'd want. Inspired Charge is an instant for two and two white. Creatures you control get plus two, plus one until the end of the turn. So this is very much a finisher in a lot of decks. Obviously, it has to be a go wide deck. Uh, the idea here being maybe a red, white, or even just mono white, mono, well, I guess not mono red, but uh, can really, really capitalize on something like this. If you can th play out just tons and tons of little tokens or small creatures and then Inspired Charge all of them, uh, ideally you're going to be able to swing in for the win very, very easily. Obviously this does work as a reverse combat trick, so you can technically use this defensively if you really need to. That's never where you want to be. This is very much a card that you would like to be winning with. I like to be solidified into that strategy a little bit more before taking something like this because it's just not good in a lot of cases. Uh, but again, if you can get all those creatures on board, absolutely phenomenal. This is going uh, to win you the game for sure. Uh, wow, okay, Lightning Bolt. So, very awesome card. Instant for one red. It deals three damage to target creature or player. If you don't know this card, you really should. Um, it's a very, very, I, I guess, I guess just the most efficient burn spell. Correct me if I'm wrong, but absolutely one of if not the most efficient uh burn spells in the game hits creatures and players for three damage and only one mana at instant speed all of that is amazing uh so this is exactly the kind of card you want it, it encourages that aggression uh you can hit the player in the face if you only need a few more points of damage uh, or you can clear the way for your creatures to swing in, which is nine times out of ten probably what you're going to do. Uh, this is 100% going to be the pick so far. Uh, it's just such a powerful, such a flexible card. It's very, very hard to beat this. Uh, pacifism. Makes a good run at it, but not as good, clearly. Uh, it's an enchant creature for one and a white. The enchanted creature cannot attack or block. So this is pseudo removal in the fact that, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, it does remove the creature from being able to take part in any kind of combat, whether that be on the aggressive side or on the defensive side, it just cannot do anything. What this doesn't do is remove the creature from the board. Now, obviously, this deals with creatures that are much more powerful than uh, Lightning Bolt can. Uh, Lightning Bolt tends to pick off the early game stuff. This can deal with a big bomb somewhat effectively. However, it does not get rid of activated abilities or anything like that. And so you really do have to be careful what you're putting pacifism on. Uh, generally speaking, you can find a good target for it. Of course, it is a very premium card for sure. But I do think Lightning Bolt, just on the efficiency and the flexibility level, is a little bit better. And so that's why I'm going to go with it over Pacifism here. Augury Owl is a 1-1 flyer for 1 and a blue. And when it enters the battlefield, you scry 3. Uh, that's actually a lot of scry effects for only 2 mana. Uh, and you do get a 1-1 flyer for only 2 mana as well. And that's pretty good. Uh, I don't mind this card. It's a little bit... Uh, how do I say that? It's going to get outpowered, obviously. It's a 1-1 flyer for 2. However, uh, if your opponent's just not running very many flyers, this gets you a lot of uh, card selection, not card advantage, and it can ping in the air repeatedly until they deal with it, which is kind of nice. Uh, it also serves to just be a fairly good jump blocker if you need it to. So 
I actually don't mind this card. It's very clearly not better than Lightning Bolt, but it's not as bad as a lot of these 1-1 one -one flyers tend to be in the early game. Uh, Fog is an instant for one green. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. I do not like fog effects in limited. Uh, most of you guys, if you've been around, probably know that. Uh, they just tend to stall the game, uh, which is exactly what you want to do in some decks. But generally speaking, in limited, you're trying to win by being the biggest, baddest threat. Uh, and a fog effect really doesn't do anything for you, except maybe give you another turn. But generally speaking, you're just kind of prolonging the inevitable. If you're in a losing situation and you fog for a turn, all that means is you draw a card. And yes, drawing a card is important, don't get me wrong, but that also gives your opponent a turn to deal with the card that you drew, so it's really not getting you as far as you might think. I really don't like cards like this. Always, always stay away from them if you can. <clears throat> Bog Raiders is a 2-2 two, two for 2 and a black. It does have Swamp Box, so uh, it's unblockable if the defending player controls a Swamp. I don't love this card. Uh, it's a much worse Grizzly Bear uh, in terms of casting cost to power toughness ratio. Obviously, it does have random upside of being really, really good against black decks. However, I prefer to think that makes it more of a sideboard card. Uh, you can obviously run this main deck if you're just really short on playables. Maybe you could get away with it, uh, particularly because this is a core set, but... I just, I don't think it's good enough. It's going to get outpowered a lot of the time. Now, if you're against a black deck, this is an unblockable 2-2 two, two for 3, which becomes much, much better. Uh, and so maybe sideboard this in, but I do not think this is a first pick at all. I think if you're in black, you late pick this as late as you possibly can, and maybe you have some random upside against other black decks. Uh, Excommunicate is a sorcery for two and a white. Put target creature on top of its owner's library. Uh, this is a very, very good tempo swing. Honestly, it's very, very powerful. Uh, yes, it's sorcery speed and at three mana, it's a little expensive, but honestly, for what you're getting, it's great. So you're able to take whatever their biggest, baddest threat is, put it back on top of their library. Now, what that does is kind of twofold. Obviously, first, you temporarily deal with the creature on board. It obviously is going to be able to come back. However, you don't have to worry about it this turn, which means you have an extra turn of dealing some damage, hopefully getting closer to that win, or finding a more permanent answer in your deck. So that's part of it. However, the other part is the fact that they're now just blanked a draw because you know exactly what they're going to draw. They're not going to have any new cards for that next turn. And that's actually really, really huge. That's a huge tempo swing in your favor. So I actually like a card like this. If I didn't have Lightning Bolt, this is a pretty solid pick, I think. Uh, don't know if it's 100% better than Pacifism, but I think I would take it over the Pacifism. Uh, just because, again, you're, you're really getting a lot of tempo out of this. So I like this card, but not better than Lightning Bolt. Uh, Merfolk Spy is a 1-1 one, one for 1 blue. It has Island Walk, so very similar to Swamp Walk. It's unblockable, but in this case, the opponent has to control an island. Uh, and then whenever it deals combat damage to a player, that player reveals a card at random from his or her hand. So this is just a really, really solid 1-1. One, one. So a 1-1 one, one for 1, right off the bat. Perfectly okay. It's not amazing, obviously. You probably wouldn't play it, but it's fine. If you needed a 1-drop, it's there. Uh, this has the random upside of being really, really good against blue decks, but not only that, if it deals that damage, you're getting random information about your opponent's hand. And so information in magic is like huge, absolutely massive. We see how cards like Inquisition of Kozilek or Thoughtseize or even things like Peak, uh, which is a very silly card, but things like that give you the information on your opponent's hand, which means you can play around the things that you know they have. Now, obviously, you're not getting perfect information. It's a random card. You, you really don't have the best info off of this, but it's something, and anything is better than nothing. So I actually don't hate this card. I would never first pick it by any means, but if I find myself in a blue deck, and this is one of the last blue cards in the pack, this is not an unlikely pick, and a not, it's, it's not an unlikely playable card either. So don't mind it, but again, Lightning Bolt, just super, super flexible, super good cards here. Our first uncommon is Condemn. It's an instant for one white. Put target attacking creature on top, uh, excuse me, on the bottom of its owner's library. Its controller gains life equal to its toughness. So this, again, very pseudo, I, I'll say this is a basic removal spell. Uh, obviously, it's pseudo removal in that the creature is in their deck, but it is at the bottom and tends to be very difficult to get towards the top. I don't think in limited you're going to have a lot of ways to shuffle your deck, though I might be wrong. Uh, but this is a very, very efficient spell. Uh, one mana to do that. Yes, they gain some life, but you can do it at instant speed and you can hit any creature. 
as long as it's attacking. That is the downside here. Uh, I still think Lightning Bolt, just that flexibility for being able to hit the player or a creature at instant speed, is a little bit better. Um, Condemn is very, very good. There's actually a lot of really good white cards in this pack, but I think I'm still going to have to pick Lightning Bolt over this. Uh, Gargoyle Sentinel is a 3-3 defender for 3 mana. Uh, you can pay 3, and until the end of the turn, it loses defender and gains flying. Uh, I don't like this card generally. Uh, it's a 3-3 for 3, which is fine, but that defender is kind of a big deal because you really want to be swinging in with a card like this. Uh, and then on top of that, to be able to do that, you can sink 3 mana into it, but that means you're not spending that 3 mana on anything else, and I think that's kind of bad. Uh, it is a mana sink, and sometimes those are good, but I just don't think in this case it is. The only upside I will say about a card like this, it is an artifact creature. It will fit into any deck. And so if you're really worried about your curve consideration, maybe this is something you'll pick up in that instance. And then War Pe Priest, excuse me, of Thune is a 2-2 for 1 and a white, and when it enters the battlefield, you can destroy target enchantment. Uh, this is a very good sideboard card. I don't think it's a very good main board card. Uh, you tend not to run up, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, against a lot of enchantments, main, uh, main board. Uh, certainly you will, I'm sure. Pacifism is a very good one, for instance. We'll probably see that if we were playing a real game. However, you can't bank on that. You don't know that for sure. Uh, and if they don't run white, it's not very likely they're going to have a pacifism. So you really just may be up against an opponent that doesn't have any enchantments, in which case this is just a bear. Now, obviously, that makes it playable regardless, which is kind of nice. However, you really want to be getting that destroy a target enchantment off on this creature as well. So I like this card. It's a very good sideboard card. Uh, but generally speaking, I would not first pick it. And then our rare is Time Reversal. Interesting card. So sorcery for three and two blue. Each player shuffles his or her hand and graveyard into his or her library, then draws seven cards. Uh, you then exile Time Reversal. This is a very powerful card, very beautiful art as well, uh, if I may say so. But I don't love this in a core set. Uh, obviously, you get to play around this a little bit more than your opponent does, which is nice. However, you're sinking five mana into it. And that's not good. The, the way that you would really break this is if you had a lot of mana dorks, maybe a green blue shell where you've got like Elvish Mystic, things like that to be able to really, really ramp out some stuff. And then you play this, shuffle everything back, draw your seven cards, and then you're still netting a lot of extra like card advantage, I guess you could say, just by just by playing a lot of things off of your mana dorks and things like that. And so it's really good for that. But it's a build around like I have never seen. It's very difficult to make this good in a draft scenario. Uh, and so I don't love this. Uh, I still think Lightning Bolt's a better pick. We do have a Swamp here. And then we do have a Foil. Wow, Leyline of the Void. Beautiful. Wow, that's, this is a great pack, guys. Uh, enchantment for two and two black. Uh, if it's in your opening hand, you can begin the game with it on the battlefield. And then if a card would be put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, you exile it instead. Funny enough, this is a pretty good combo with Time Reversal. However, still not first pickable in my mind unless you're just value picking. Uh, this is a standard legal card, so a lot of you guys might actually know this from standard. Uh, this is a very, very powerful sideboard card against graveyard decks. But we really only see graveyard decks, not so much in limited unless you're in a particular graveyard focus set. Uh, but really a lot in Constructed where we see Dredge, things like that really, really take over, uh, despite being neutered a bit uh, recently. Uh, but Leyline of the Void is a very, very efficient way of dealing with those decks. However, in Limited, not very good. Uh, I honestly think Lightning Bolt is just the most efficient, solid pick out of this pack. Now, this is a very good pack. I just want to point that out. Lots of really, really good stuff. That ley line is great value. So really stoked to open that. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack video.